not romantic, too dramatic. We can work at night by night. She says I'm not romantic. I say she's too dramatic. I tell her while we're at it, we can work at night by night. She says I'm not romantic. I say she's too dramatic. I tell her while we're at it, we can work at night by night. She says I'm not romantic. I say she's too dramatic. Yeah. Oh, that's a smart idea. Hey, sitting here with the wonderful cast, this crew, everybody. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Hello. It's about to go say hi to everyone. And Lou. Like, like <laughs> that's right. Y'all on camera too. But we got to be on camera. Y'all on camera. Too. Oh. I am sliding out of this chair. I, no, and, and this dress is just as slick as So now that I use my leg muscle to stay together and keep my knees together. <laughs> Y'all right if I do the man I agree. Catholic girl schooling. heavy 
Hi, I'm Anthony D'Alessandro from Deadline Hollywood. Welcome to the Stellar Artois and Deadline Hollywood panel for the film Clemency. <laughs> Round of applause. It is premiering tonight at the Library Theater at 6 p.m. Um, and let's introduce our whole gang here. Uh, to my immediate left, we have Alfre Woodard. <laughs> Writer, director, Chinoe, uh, Chinoe, uh, sorry. Chukwu. Aldous Hodge. Richard Schiff. Wendell Pierce. Michael O'Neill. Daniel Brooks. Richard Gunn. And producer Bronwyn Cornelius. So tell us about... Uh, this is this is a very unique drama about death pen, uh, about the death penalty, taken from the point of view of of a female prison warden. Tell us how you got this off the ground. Getting a, a serious social justice film like this made, I got to imagine, very easy. <laughs> the easiest thing in the world. Uh, no, I mean. <laughs> I, it, it was about like a four year journey uh, from the first draft to getting into production. Uh, and I spent about four years deeply researching it and, and, and going on this multi year soul journey that I think really, that really appeared on the page. And that's how we were able to get Alfre Woodard to play the warden um, through the script and get this, uh, the rest of this phenomenal cast that really helped with getting this project off the ground and greenlit and, and, and made. So tell us about preparing for your character. How a, a, a female prison warden, very unique, I mean, is that, is that common in, in the prison, in, in, in the prisons, in, you know, in the prison system in death row? In, uh, in Ohio, it is, this common, I didn't even know there were any, but Chinoye took me on a prison uh, crawl to meet people, to know people, to actually find out who they were. And I met five women wardens. Uh, they were all very different. And you can't imagine, you know, we used to like, oh, hello, I've got the keys. Mm -hmm. They, they were like Sunday school teachers. They were, they were the woman at the clinic who takes, you know, takes your blood and chats with you about your eating habits. They were regular women. Some of them come to it from mental health. Some come to it from social work, but they all come from different places. And the key to being a good warden, and this is so, you know, I, I'm boiling this down to you know, something very elementary is that you can maintain order by keep it, having a well-oiled organization, keeping everybody that is employed in your system, including the inmates, keeping everybody safe mm -hmm. and organized and having a sense of purpose. And that's what makes a good warden. Interestingly enough, empathy. But you cannot walk around with your heart on your sleeve because you have to be the captain. You can't, you can't waver. You can't show, uh, your legs can't wobble. And so that's what I learned from these women. And as we all know, when you really want somebody to be on point, not waver, not blink, and not wobble, you get a woman. <laughs> yes. Now, did you did you find with any like your character that they, um, you know, yours yours is breaking, you know, she's getting emotional. One one particular prisoner is is affecting her. Do you do you, did you find any out there that they were toward the end of their journey where they they also were, you know, kind of like done. The level of PTSD among uh, prison. The, the prison employees, and especially the people that work death row, is, it, it, it reminds you of how people come back after six, six tours of duty in Afghanistan or Iraq. It's that deep. 
families are not only broken apart, they are destroyed. And um, yeah, it is so, but they feel a sense of calling mm -hmm. because somebody's got to step into the breach of what we say we want as a society in terms of punishment for crime. And a lot of times the problem is alleged crimes and somebody's got to do that. So um, this is a film about those people in the middle that, that we never talk about. Everybody has a breaking point. My character, Bernadine, is, this, is, has her 12th and 13th uh, execution to oversee. Uh, most of the people we met have about that many. We just happen to find this uh, composite character at a breaking point mm -hmm. in hers. Now, as far as death row, like, I mean, this, we were talking about the death penalty back in 1984. We we're talking about it, you know, 10 years later in 1994. How has it gotten worse? What, what kind of stats did you find? Um, a lot. Uh, so the amount of executions nationally is actually decreasing. Um, but the death penalty is still legal in over 30 states. And, um, and so, it, 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 and there's some state, like the, the, there's some states like Texas that carry out the death penalty very quickly. Um, there's some places where the average time that someone is on death row is 17 years. Um, so it's still very much a practice. And this film will hopefully um, in, like challenge audiences to really think about not just the death penalty, but about incarceration and, and the kind of ecosystem of hu humanities that are tied to incarceration in general, and, and especially capital punishment specifically, but in incarceration in general. Aldous, there's a scene where she makes you cry, and I cried. Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> Liz, was this the most challenging role for you? I know you've done a lot of things, but I mean, seriously, um, it's deep. You, you guys wear it. Yeah. So I play Anthony Woods. Uh, this brother's been in jail for about 16 years, currently on death row uh, for a crime that he maintains his innocence on, but uh, evidence would say otherwise. So we don't know if he did it or not. But at the end of the day, he's still staring down the same barrel, which is one of these days they're going to take me out. Um, uh, the challenging thing for me with this role was how do you develop hope in a hopeless situation? It's not like he's going to get free, you know. Um, still fighting for clemency, but regardless of the situation, uh, he's still a prisoner. And how do you maintain a sense of who you are and your humanity when everyone treats you as though you are inhuman? Because death row inmates are treated very differently than other prisoners, lifers, you know, they're kept in a very different wing. Um, communication is restricted, all these kinds of things. So um, he's really fighting for himself. And the thing I love that I got a chance to do was explore this person trying to build up the courage to still fight for himself when the world is fighting against him. And there are very few people and elements in his life that he's allowed to hold on to. Um, one of those elements is the relationship he has with Marty, played by my man right here, Mr. Yeah. Richard Chef. Yeah. Um, and that shows you what real friendship is, that relationship right there. Another relationship he has that's a, a sort of a beacon of hope is played by the lovely Danielle, you know. She's, uh, I'll say, someone from his past. Um, and then, oddly enough, another relationship is the one that he builds through his process with Day, the warden. And there's an uncanny kinship that sources develop dealing with this reality he has to face where he doesn't know the answer, whether or not he will gain clemency. But... You know, the man is pulling at straws, and I think it is such a fantastic exposition of how one has to fight for themselves down to the wire, down to the last moment. And the thing that I really love about the script is that Chinoya executes empathy so well in that she allows us to have the choice by 
posing the question. And <laughs> she's going to put you in a bind. You're going to go in there thinking, all right, you know, I know what I feel. And then you're going to come out by, by halfway through the film. You're going to be like, uh, cool, cool. Uh. I mean, but if he, if he did that, I mean, I would say, and then by the end of the movie, you're just going to be like, I don't even know who I am right now. <laughs> because the thing that's great is that there are so many choices that have to be earned. So much work has to be done to earn. The, they're not easy results with these characters. But for the audience, we have so many wonderful scenarios that now we have to ask ourselves, what do you really think now? Because your whole world is flipped. And that's what I love about it. She doesn't tell us. She guides us and allows us to mm -hmm. talk to ourselves about it later. Richard, in preparing um, for your character, was it was there any um, you know with these cases, are there successful appeals, and and does it really it, it, it does really run to the down to the wire, down down to when down to execution day execution hour. Um, uh, first, I want to I want to respond to the question of uh, you know uh, what is it like to have such a challenging role to be offered. Um, to me, the most challenging thing that we do is elevating crap into the realm of mediocrity. And when you get, when you get uh, the writing and the storytelling uh, from someone like Chinoye, and you get surrounded by these actors, um, while there are great challenges, some even greater than you would, even ex would ever expect, uh, it's being in the environment uh, of uh, discovery <clears throat> and freedom uh, that is so joyous and so beautiful and wonderful that it feels like you can accomplish anything simply by just taking a step forward. And um, uh, so I, I just have to say, everyone on this stage I'm, I'm fa fans of and are amazing to work with, and, and that's the best thing about this. What was your question? <laughs> uh, oh yes, I remember. Uh, yeah, it, there, there, it, it, a, a great challenge for this character is, um, and it's a great curiosity for me, um, uh, someone who is faced with the choice, you know, because these, some of these other characters are not, do not have a choice. Certainly all this is character is in a position of no choice and no freedom and, um, uh, he has, Marty has a choice to do this work. And I've always been curious with those that sacrifice, and I don't even think they think of it that way, but that's their calling, um, to fight a fight that they cannot win. Mm -hmm. And um, winning for Marty and for all this is character is not dying. That's the best you can do. Uh, and it's unlikely that you will, the odds are stacked enormously against even that. So you're fighting for humanity uh, between people. You're fighting for a cause that's uh, so abstract because of the obstacles are so great and the resistance is so great that you can't even touch it. You can't even feel like it's there to touch. Uh, and the difficulty of, of, a, of a, a, a life choice like Marty made, that his most intimate relationships are with someone who's about to die and who I have failed. <laughs> the third time today. <laughs> <That's just laughs> <laughs> they, I'm so, I'm this is a tribute to, to the kind of storytelling that I, this is why we got into this. Yeah. It's not to do uh, commercials, you know, and, and, uh, um, and. <laughs> <laughs> when, Wendell, there's, there's, a, there's a saying that, you know, police are, uh, you, you, play, you play a teacher, mm -hmm. her, her husband in the film. There's a saying that um, 
police officers don't take their work home with them, or they shouldn't. Space for us all to make this film. So that's first thing. Um, the second thing is I have spent many years of my life being intentional about finding my joy. And so everything I do, whether it's directing, whether it's teaching, whether it's just hanging out with friends, I'm really intentional about operating from a space of joy. And that coupled with uh, my natural energy. Uh, <laughs> got a lot of energy, y'all. Um, <laughs> I think all of that really helped to create um, a positive environment. I mean, this is heavy material, but I, I really believe that there was so much joy and love um, on set and, and emotional safety on set. Uh, so that's something else. I also uh, need to give a, pro a shout out to my incredible DP, Eric Bronco. Yeah. who, I mean, this wouldn't have happened without him. He kept us moving and he kept us, he helped to kept, keep us organized. And yes, the visuals are absolutely delicious, but um, Eric also helped create an emotional safe space for me to do what I need to do and for the actors as well, for them to do what they need to do. And I just think that there was so much emotional safety on set and that allowed us all to be vulnerable and really go there. I, I sorry, go ahead. Also, do I need it? Hello. Yes, I'm. I, I sort of add also is that actors are in the people business, yes. and they have to love people to really fully bring people to life to tell stories. Yes. And your when you're creating stories for people, you have to think about the households where those stories are landing. What are they eating? Do they have health care? Are they up against the wall being frisked constantly? What is going on? Is somebody beating on somebody in that house? So that's why we care. We, don't, we can't help but care about people. And so we all, what, whatever we feel about criminal justice, whatever we feel about the death penalty, you know, whatever point of view we have on it, you you can't come to this work without knowing that you've been called to something mm -hmm. and that there are lives in the balance on every side. And it's the call of duty. That takes over. Everything else falls, falls into place. And yeah, we went off the rails emotionally a lot. Um, but there, we were always there to keep somebody's hand from going into the abyss. Yeah. But you know you're protected when you're working with, with honest motives and right objectives. Yeah. I, just, uh, I just wanted to answer your question before about how, did, how do you do this in 19 days? How do you collect these people and do this kind of it's very 17. challenging? 17. 17. Um, <laughs> But it start. It starts. I gotta tell you this, uh, Chinoya. It's, I, I I don't know how you guys feel, but in all the work that I've done, and uh, because I'm old, it's apparently a lot. Um, I've never worked on walked onto a set and felt such clarity and such um, uh, uh, freedom at the same time. There was no doubt that these that this team and and this team. And including uh, um, the AD department and, and the crew all the way down the line knew exactly what the plan was for the day, and all of us because this is a movie that we did for very little um, compensation, <laughs> other than the rich, other other than the life compensation, which is priceless. Um, we all come from other jobs, so our schedule is tight, and to come. And feel like, oh, shit, we only have uh, I, four scenes? To, all right. And then you feel like you have all the time in the world, even though they don't. And that's, I've never been on a set like that before, ever. It comes from passion, but it also comes from an understanding of how to tell story, to respecting uh, uh, people's um, uh, jobs, and, their t and, 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 and not only respecting, but celebrating their talent. 
and, and their freedom to, to be. Um, and it's so rare, and it's part of the reason why I think this project turned out the way it did. Thank you. I thought we could Danielle, <laughs> um, you play a very special person in um, Anthony's life, played by Aldous. What, what gives your character hope in the film? What keeps you going? I know, I'm processing that question. Because you're, you're um, you don't yeah. give up. She, yeah, she's very complicated. And I think it goes back to what uh, Miss Alfrey was saying about why we get into this business. We have to love people. And to be honest, this was a challenging part for me because some of the choices that she made, I did not agree with and struggling with, you know, trying to see her point of view um, was challenging. Um, I don't even remember your question, but, um, but what I can say is her hope, how she found her hope. I think it's through um, tr her future. I think, I think it's her child. Uh, I think that's what gives her hope is the next generation. Um, I feel like that's what um, gives her what she needs. Uh, but getting to that point was frustrating as an actor, um, but fun to to discover and, and play and figure out who she was, you know. Um, but I wanted to say uh, it's it's quite interesting. We spend a lot of time thinking about. The and, and Alfred kind of hit it on hit on it a while ago, but we spend time thinking about you know the person that has been incarcerated and the person that was the victim, but n not enough time is spent on those family, the family, the ones that have been affected by it too, the ones who have sold their car for bail money or the ones who are struggling to tell their child why why their father is not there. Um, that's that. Those are the people, you know, I, and I appreciate her, you know, including this character because I think it's beneficial to add that to the narrative. Um, and so I, I, I um, yeah, I just, as an artist, you know, who's been playing an inmate for seven years and has spent time in real prisons. Um, investors, the name of Ace Pictures, who understood the importance of the story, understood the importance of um, supporting female filmmakers and also a female-driven story. And so they came on board. Um, board. Alfrey fortunately um, believed in the script and had signed on a couple of years before the financing came together. And Wendell also was a, a very early supporter of the project. In fact, when I got involved four years ago, which you know I had already spoken to Wendell, so thank you guys for believing. And, you know, I think that that's a, a testament to Chinoya, and the script is so authentic. The amount of deep diving that she did do and the research that she did came through on the page, and the heart and the humanity came through on the page. And so when we were able to get in front of the right people, um, they, they would sign on and they would get it done. But like any production, I mean, there are massive challenges. And then, of course, we had the budget restraints and um, did magically have just a phenomenal crew of people that pulled it off in 17 days and a very understanding <laughs> group of actors <laughs> that helped make that happen. That's amazing, 17 days. That really is. Um, well, I'm going to throw it out to you guys. Are there any questions? Does anybody have any questions? Yes. I, I feel like I have an obsession with prisons. Right? <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank they did not feel free enough to be. They did not. They did not feel free enough to perform, and I just wanted to know. Well, you spoke about creating a safe space, but now for the actors, um, how did that change your process or even change your performance? Shooting. Uh, shooting in a prison. Yeah. 
prison? No, she be from Memphis. Yeah. Actual location. Uh, so for some reason, uh, a lot of characters I play have been in and out of prison quite often. <laughs> 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 Um, Speak, black man. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, awkwardly enough, I, when I heard about the premise of this, um, I was just coming off of another film uh, where the character I played had been in prison. He'd been in jail for a year, prison for five years, parole for another five years, you know, as a registered sex offender, um, wearing an ankle monitor and everything. Uh, I had dealt with that whole ordeal, you know, the whole mentality of being in solitary confinement for many days on end. So I was quite adept um, at the prison thing. I almost considered not taking this chance because I said, is it too much? Is it too much of the same thing? Is it too? But at the same time, I reconsidered the honesty of the role and the point of the project. As long as the art is effective and has a reason, I'm all for it. As long as the the goal at the end of it is bigger than just, you know, a scenario, I'm all for it. And what I pulled out of this story, for me as, a, as an appreciator, was so much more brilliant than what one would initially assume given the scenario, okay, death row inmate, da da da. No, there's so much brilliance in this story, and it elevates the idea of what this world is. And I think it can help so many more people to understand what this world is in order to put them in a position to actually do things to change or, or, or uh, recreate an act or, or um, to be the start of the change that we need to see in this judicial system, right? So it's effective. It has a point. So as far as the prison setting, for me, it doesn't really take me out or make me uncomfortable. This is what the real, this with the world, life is tough. There's many moments in life that are uncomfortable. But is being in that prison going to help somebody? At the end of the day, I hope it can. And that's why I'm going into that prison. So I'm going to go into that prison. And you need to see the authenticity. You need to see the pain. You need to see how hard it is. You need to see the struggle. And we all need to be in it together because at the end of it, there are going to pe be people who benefit from this far beyond our reach. There's a bigger goal than us being there. There's a bigger goal to the performance. There's a bigger goal to the art, you know? And you got everybody in here in this process. Granted, some of those scenes dealing with the death row inmates in the scenarios were a little tough mentally, but uh, we all had the passion of understanding the full potential of this project, and everybody came with their full heart. So I think it just depends on why you're there. Are you there to act, to make a movie, or are you there to create something to make a difference? It's a di you know, it's a change. Can I just add, being, oh, sorry, you go ahead. Being an actor goes to, you know how you put on, you work, you read your, your script, the character starts to sort of germinate and there's an excitement in your corpuscles and you do your work over however long it takes you to slowly build that person and, and put flesh on them and stank on them so that they're a real human being. Then you put your costume, that's how much every, every aspect of a film is vital to a, to a successful portrayal the makeup, the hair, the costume, to find who that person is. It is a gold mine to be in yeah. the place you need yeah. to be yeah. because if you are Absolutely. open and you are working correctly, you don't even have to pretend. All you have to do is be present and respond the way you respond to your other acting partner is listening and responding is what we do in life. So. That's half your work is being there. Yeah. And being, you know, I'm claustrophobic. Every time you go inside, we shot in Sybil Brand Prison, which is, uh, it is draconian compared to how the prisons are built now. I, I actually did a play there for Color Girls uh, who considered suicide when the rainbow is enough, in Jizaki Shange's play. We were doing it at Mark Taper in, in LA. We would go a couple of times to the prison and do that play for, for the ladies locked up there. So it's been closed down for a while, but the sweat, the 
the terror, the awfulness, the, the desperation, the lives that got them there, the lives they wasted there, it's all in those walls yeah. to the point that we didn't want to shoot longer than 17 days. We had to get the hell <laughs> out of civil brand. <laughs> shit. And real quick, That's though. True. Exactly what she it said. Was, it, was, it was like one or two times where they forgot a brother was in the cell. <laughs> so I'm out there like, hey, fam, <laughs> hey. <laughs> And it's like, oh, we can't, we can't open it right now. We gotta go back to the whatever the office is, and we gotta take this long journey. We gotta hit the button, and this. So I gotta sit in here for another cool five, ten minutes, smooth. That's how we gonna do. Okay, y'all want me to have the real experience? If I, I'm gonna say okay. one thing that because it was a very oppressive and heavy environment, and it was clear as an observer that that was having a, an impact, positive impact on the acting what they brought. But on a couple of the really heavy days, we even brought in a set therapist. Yeah. Um, just so in case people felt it was too oppressive. Not to scare y'all from I wish shooting. They do that on actually, oranges and we actually way. lost a couple of people. We did. That couldn't because handle it. Because it got it. to be too much. A couple of people on the film couldn't handle it because it was just too. Yeah. The film goes there. <laughs> so Stella Etois, who, who's, who's, uh, who sponsored this panel, uh, they're celebrating great, memorable moments in film. Can, I know we've talked about a lot. Can you share one more memorable moment from the set? Something. There's so many. Anything. There's so many. There's so many. There are things to share, but then we get spill secrets, so I'm going to just yeah. keep my mouth shut. <laughs> That one time in the cell when I did, oh, nah, nah, well, nah. Well, I can't nah, tell you, nah. I cannot tell you the moment. Do you want to go? No, you go. Okay. It was Oh, <laughs> now I want to hear. Okay, um, I can't tell you the moment because you got to watch the film, but um, writing the script, I had to go into some really deep, dark places. But once I, we were going into pre-production, I was pretty good at emotionally compartmentalizing. Like, all right, we got a job to do. So, but, and I didn't, for all of these years of developing this project and of, you know, making this happen, there was not a, there was no, I didn't take a time, take time to just process and to do something with all of the emotions that were just in me. And there was one day on set that m my production designer, Marga Rust, who's phenomenal, and I hope she's here somewhere, but um, yes. <laughs> she was, by my side some, for some reason, I'm at the monitor and I'm watching the scene, I'm like, okay, framing, composition, perform, all that stuff. I broke down in tears and sobbed and Margo had to just hold me. And it was this bubbling up of every, of like years and not allowing myself the space for my own humanity and to feel um, and I broke down on set and at the monitor. Which and actor I, was it? <laughs> I'm not gonna say any more than that, but uh, but it, it that I I will never forget that moment. And uh, but yeah, I, I felt it, and and in that moment, uh, I was it, everything just made sense to me, and I realized I need to give myself my own, the benefit of humanity, like I'm really trying to do through this film. So, and I don't know if you mentioned it in this one how closely you actually have worked with inmates for years. Yeah. You know what I mean? So holding that weight. Yeah as well, yeah. you know, she oh, does she incredible talks, work. Yes, she does amazing, I mean, she does amazing work. I, so I, um, in, in doing the research for this film, I, I volunteered on, on many clemency cases, the first one for Tyra Patterson, who was serving a life sentence for crimes she didn't commit. She got out over a year ago, so. <laughs> um, and I'm currently working with uh, some nonprofit or uh, legal organizations to grant a ma to, for a mass clemency appeal for 13 women who are serving life sentences for p defending themselves against their abuser. Mm -hmm. We just uh, Governor Kasich of Ohio just granted clemency to one of the women um, about a week or two ago. So <laughs> still more work to be done, but you know. Uh, so, uh, and uh, all of that work has led me to creating a program called Pens to Pictures. Which <laughs>